Welcome to part four of lecture six of aerospace propulsion. So again, we can identify some trends from these equations. And if I just look at the expression for propulsive efficiency, I need to figure out what's going on with UE over U naught when I increase that area. So I can look here and I say, well, if I increase the disk area, everything else being constant, this first term gets smaller. So UE over U naught gets smaller, gets closer to one. So increasing the area means UE over U naught decreases, so the propulsive efficiency goes up. And for the fluid power, we can directly see that um, if we increase the disk area, um, we decrease this first term, uh, and the disk, uh, the, the power required, again, decreases. So both of these effects are physically due to the fact that there's less momentum change being imparted per unit area across the propeller. Um, this corresponds to the blades being more lightly loaded. Finally, let's turn our attention to the non-dimensional parameters that are relevant for propellers. Um, so we'll start with the dimensional quantities that we need as input. So there's the propeller diameter, the propeller rotational speed, uh, the torque, the thrust, the density of the fluid, the viscosity of the fluid, the bulk elastic modulus of the fluid and the flight velocity. So we can now introduce some uh, non-dimensional parameters. So we a thrust coefficient, which is a non-dimensionalization of the thrust. Uh, and this is going to depend on the Reynolds number, Mach number, and advance ratio. So we use the symbol J for advance ratio. This is sort of the, one of the key performance parameters for propellers. And essentially, it's the distance that the propeller moves forward in one resolution, that's u naught over n, divided by the propeller diameter. So it's u naught over d times n. So the thrust, then, is a thrust coefficient um, times the density times the velocity squared times the diameter to the fourth power. So we can see the definition of thrust coefficient is t over rho n squared d to the four. And we can expect that this thrust coefficient will be purely a function of Reynolds number, the Mach number, say, the tip Mach number for the blades, and the advance ratio of the, the propeller. We can also define a torque coefficient to non-dimensionalize the torque in a very similar way. Right? The torque is just the force times the distance, so we expect that we need an additional dependence on the length scale here, which is the diameter. So it's going to be the torque is the torque coefficient times rho n squared d to the 5. But again, the torque coefficient will just depend on the Reynolds number, tip Mach number, and advance ratio. And the propulsive efficiency then is just can be rewritten to be based on these, co these non-dimensional parameters. Again, this is derived in the MIT Open Course we but what we end up with is the propulsive efficiency is just this constant 1 over 2 pi. Um, times uh, the thrust coefficient over the torque coefficient times the advance ratio. So this expression is useful in a couple of different ways. Um, so if j, which is sort of a propeller design parameter, and the coefficients are known, we can directly compute what we expect the efficiency to be. Or if the, we, the efficiency is known or we have an efficiency target, it gives us a constraint on the relationship between the coefficients and the advance ratio, um, which is a design parameter. You sometimes also see a power coefficient used instead of the torque coefficient. Um, and this is just related to uh, the torque coefficient by a constant factor of 2 pi. Um, and if I go back one slide, you can see that we have this 2 pi over kq in the denominator. And so you might sometimes see that replaced with this power coefficient instead. That's as far as we're going to go into the world of propellers in this course. It's just a high-level introduction couples well with the material that we just spent the last couple of lectures on related to uh, internal combustion engines, which invariably power propellers on aircraft. Um, so now, um, moving on in the course, we'll, we'll begin to look at jet engine design, which is what we'll spend pretty much the rest of the course doing.